Okay, so before we start sewing, I want to make sure that you have all the pieces as you needed them because maybe it wasn't too clear, uh, especially the um, color. And then you have to make it twice because you have the outer one and you have the inner one. So you have to have two of these. So this, that's what you need. We don't need it for now. Then what I did, uh, because we have a slit in the back, in the mid back, I cut just a little bit of fabric along this so I can fold it in and I can let the other one out and then we have a bit of um, a, can you see that? a bit of a fabric beneath uh, the slit and that's nicer than when it's all straight open so back part, uh, the mid back part so cut that put that aside um, oh, and then the uh, pieces for the front, because you have uh, two pieces for the front, but three pieces for the lining. So I want to make sure that you did that all okay. So this is the mid front one. This is the side front one. And you have to have this one in lining, but also this one, because you need first in the same, on the same fabric, the mid part. I didn't have enough fabric to make it in one, so I have to sew a little piece down under because it wasn't enough. And then you have <coughs> this rest of this uh, pattern. You have to have it in uh, lining um, material. So you have to have that too. And what we're gonna do when we're gonna make the lining, when we're gonna sew the lining, we're just gonna sew the fabric one on top of the lining one and then you don't have to uh, finish or anything then you already have a really nice uh, finish so these two are for the mid front one um, okay now then what we're gonna do is we can start sewing so we're gonna do is we're gonna take the back mid we're gonna stitch the midline and that is very easy by doing it just one centimeter on top of the other part and we're gonna sew half a centimeter from the edge and the same we're gonna do with the <coughs> side part it goes in this corner and you can choose if you want to put the mid part on top of the side part or the side part on top of the mid part it doesn't matter it's your creativity it's your project uh, I think I will go for um, the mid over the side yes I think the mid over the side so you can do this for <coughs> uh, both the two back parts also for the two uh, front side parts it's, it's exactly the same um, what you also can do is do the shoulder seams exactly the same uh, match it up with the shoulder, shoulder seams from the front the back and the front uh, of course not the lining but just the outer fabric this one and you're gonna sew that um, what else can we do well let's start with this and then we go on with the side seams maybe that's uh, that's easier so have fun with sewing and when I wanted to start sewing this morning the worst thing happened that can happen to someone who sews a lot my machine broke it didn't function anymore he didn't want to do anything so I had to bring it to the maintenance shop and I hope he can fix it because I'm very attached to that one and I don't want to buy a new one so I hope he can make it um, I have another very simple one that I never use I got it from someone who didn't um, use it anyway so I have it as a backup but I happily never had to use it um, I already had some troubles with it because I started three hours ago and, and now I got it working I don't know what the problem was, but it's not really the best quality, I think, normally. That doesn't really matter, because also a simple sewing machine can do the work normally, but this one didn't. But I hope I can start now. Um, so what I did, I pinned the center uh, front on the side front, and I decided to pin the front on the side. You can also do the side on the front, that's whatever you like, but I think this is the nicest 
to sew with this uh, sort of princess seam. Make sure you give it enough overlap because otherwise the seam will uh, open because we don't do white sides together and open it up. So you have it on top of each other and when you don't have enough overlap it will uh, open. So make sure with every pin you, you uh, put in that you check if your overlap is enough. Now cross our fingers this will work now. Do a back stitch at the beginning and the end. I had to search where it was on this one, but it's this beautiful pink button here. Oh, there goes the thread already. So very slowly, so that you can do it very secure, because this has to be really neat, otherwise it will look uh, very self-made and I don't like that, I think you don't like it too, so be very slow, very secure. Now I'm ready to sew the shoulder seams, I put the front on top of the back and the uh, mid uh, back seam and what I did, I told you to um, do an extension on the both pieces of the back pattern but I cut off the top layer because I didn't think it was nice when you uh, fold it over normally you would when you have normal fabric but with this fabric with no fraying you can just cut it off and then it falls nicely over the underlay and make a nice strengthening stitch, stitch here on top of the slit so I'm gonna sew this part We have made some really progress. We almost have an entire coat except for the sleeves. So I did the, oh, better put it the other way. I put the front um, sides to the front mid on both sides, the side back on the mid back with the slit. I really like this over stitch uh, seam. Um, it's not often that you do it, almost mm, uh, with no fabric, only with the no fraying fabric and there's not much fabric like that. Uh, but I really like it because it's something different, it's always right sides together, uh, folded over top stitch or something like that. And this is a really different uh, kind of sewing, so I'm really <laughs> enjoying it because uh, I'm always doing the same thing and uh, this is different. Um, what I don't like, and if you have the same fabric as I am, is the cooked wool is the smell of it. I'm very sensitive to smell and it smells like a, a, a huge sack. I don't know if you know what huge is. I think I'm gonna buy some, some uh, fabric spray uh, that's especially for uh, wool. But I think we turned out very well. I did the side seams also. I think I didn't say that but it's just the same as all the others so you can do the side seams too. And then you have the entire coat without the collar and without um, the sleeves. So now we're gonna go on with the sleeves and well it's it's just the same uh, put the side sleeve to the upper sleeve um, like the other seams we did so it's exactly the same as you did and when you sew them together then you're gonna close the uh, sleeve by putting the side sleeve on the top sleeve on the other side and then you have a circle like a normal sleeve is so we're gonna do that and I'll come back and I'll show you how you can put the top of the sleeve into the coat because that is uh, rather tricky especially when you have this thick fabric uh, it's sometimes not that easy so I come, come back for that to show you how you can uh, pin it in into the coat and I'm very happy because I have my sewing machine back um, and maybe that sounds stupid for people who don't sew that much but I'm really attached to this one and I really didn't want to buy a new one so uh, I'm gonna sew with my old sewing machine again. So we're gonna sew the seams of the sleeve. Well, and as happy as I was with the uh, on top of each other seams, um, as unhappy I, uh, unhappy I got when I made the sleeves because my sleeves turned out to be so tight that I couldn't sew 
all the way down to the end. So I had to go one way uh, until I couldn't get further because the uh, fabric is too thick to get it underneath the needle. And then I had to stop and go to the other side and push this under the needle as far as I could. And it was really annoying. I hope you didn't have that, but if you had, we know, we know you. We had the same problem. And I got it just barely, but it's finished. So now we're gonna pin in the sleeves. Uh, and when you've never done that, this is maybe a bit difficult, but uh, you just have to do it. It's, it's nothing strange or um, no tricks or tips to do. Just do as I say. Um, with your pattern, you have marked the middle of your uh, sleeve. And that mark goes together with the shoulder seam. So take your sh so shoulder seam and pin that to where you marked your sleeve. And I noticed that uh, also here the on top of the seam is not really ideal for sewing in a sleeve. So don't be afraid. It's it's rather tricky, but um, you can do it. You can make it. It's it's more difficult than. A uh, normal uh, sleeve, but when you've done this, then you can sew all the sleeves. So it's a good lesson to uh, to do this now. Uh, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, go all the way around, pin in the uh, sleeve as nicely as you can. Uh, I already pinned the other one. I'll show you here. It's a bit difficult to see on camera. There you go. Um, and I had to uh, pinch it in a little bit on top, that's normal for a coat or for uh, a blazer. Uh, when you're lucky then the outside of your sleeve is the same as the outside of your coat and then you can just turn around, just start at the middle and try to divide it nicely uh, along the whole coat uh, arm opening. You see that? A bit down. Get all the way around the sleeve to the other side. And then we're going to sew this all the way around. And then you have a really nice cap sleeve for a coat. So I hope you can manage. If there are, are any questions, then leave them below. I will uh, react as soon as I can. And uh, then I can help you. Or maybe someone else can help when you uh, leave a comment down. So we're going to sew this in. Okay, so the outer part of the coat is almost finished. Uh, I sewed in the sleeves. Looks very nice. Um, and then uh, the only thing we had to do is pin in the um, and sew in the collar and the pockets. But the pockets I do uh, as last when the lining is in there too. So um, I want to show you how I did the collar because that is a rather confusing thing of uh, a coat. Um, and I made some adjustment because I thought I'd like that better. So what I did, this was our pattern. It was the one that we drew. And this was the side that you have to attach to the neckline. So I did that to the coat. This is the fold of the uh, fabric. So it's like this. This is the lining part. And you pin it, I was uh, looking what was nicer, put it on top or underneath, but I put it on top of the coat. And you go all the way around the neckline until the marking that you made, and the marking is this point on the collar. And if you imagine that this is the front of the uh, coat, uh, the marking is here, and that is where the... Uh, uh, overlay of the dress uh, of the coat is ending so when you draw this line all the way up then that's the marking point and those two must be together so that's this point and that's where the color uh, goes away from the coat from the levels so you must be sure that you have this really nice aligned and what I saw when I did this I saw that my curve here can show you well. This curve I put it a bit up but it was too much so I cut it off like that so that it's more straight and it's depending on what fabric you have and how it falls whether how, how much you have to do this so I normally I draw it rather up because you can always cut off but you cannot add so uh, and with this fabric it's very easy because you don't even have to finish it so you just cut off what, what you don't want here to be. So that's what I did um, 
Then you pin this collar all around to the mid and then back to the other side. And then when you have it on, so you are going to sew this of course. And then we have it on, it folds over of course. I must lay this nicely, then you can see how it looks when it's really finished. Because this makes the lapels, the collar with the front of the coat. And then you get this. And then the focus, yes. Then you get this. And then you have a really nice uh, curve, of, no, not a curve, what it's called, a triangle. Um, and you cut it as, as much as you want. If you want even more, then you can cut it even more down or even more up here. It's what you like. It's, it's, there's no rules for that, it's just what your preference is. And then when I saw, I hung this on my mannequin. And then I saw, I think it's nice, I saw that in on a coat um, a time ago. Um, when you have a cut in here in the back, this is the mid-back of the collar. And I cut this out because I thought it's really nice. It looks really cute when there's something else on the back. I always love details on the back and there's not many details on this coat. So I thought, okay, I'll uh, cut this out. Uh, I didn't do it for the lining yet, but I do that when we have to um, sew them together. Then I, cut, can, cut, cut, I can cut exactly this same shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew this on. And then the coat is ready, uh, except for the lining. And for the pockets, the pockets I do when I have the lining in. So uh, after this, we're going to go on with the lining. And, um, well, the lining is almost the same. It's another coat. So when you're really done with this, you can also stop here and your woolen coat is ready. But um, as I said, I like with this woolen coat, I like a lining because the wool doesn't feel that good on the skin to me. Uh, so I want the lining and you can slide more easily in the sleeves with lining. But when you're done with this, then you can certainly stop now and wear this coat when you put the, the uh, pockets on and the buttons on. That is, uh, it's a very nice coat. This one is um, new to sew. Of course, you uh, put this one on top of the lining fabric. Uh, all the other uh, seams, you must do uh, the ordinary way. So put white sides together and then fold it over. And then you can finish it. You don't really have to because you don't see it. It's the inner side of the uh, coat. Uh, certainly I'm going to do this with the serger. So I mine is finished uh, immediately when I sew it. So that's very easy. But if you do it with a sewing machine, then it's up to you what you want to do. So we're going to sew the whole lining. It's exactly the same as you did for the coat. So I don't have to explain that. Uh, and then I'll come back and show you how we do the two things, put the two things together. And um, then we have a whole beautiful woolen coat. Everyone that came here that saw what I was making said, you're making a woolen coat, it's really difficult. I said, well, I make it for beginners too. So I hope you're very happy when you have uh, finished this project because I think everyone will be amazed that you made it yourself. And it's getting really nice because I put it on already. So I know how it's gonna be when it's finished. So we go on sewing the color, the, the um, lining, and then we'll come back for the rest. Okay, the lining I'm going to do with my serger because that is easier, but you can certainly do it just for your normal sewing machine. Um, I'm starting with the um, facing in the real fabric uh, where we have to attach the uh, lining and that's just the mid front to the extra part of uh, the mid front. And because we have to um, hem the lining fabric, I fold it in a bit. I'm not sure how long the coat will be. Maybe I'll make it shorter. So. I just fold it in a bit and then I'm gonna sew it from there and later on I can make the hem and sew this uh, closed on the on the fabric. So I'm gonna start around here and then I'm gonna sew all the way uh, up. So I hope you managed to uh, sew all the lining together and that you have now two coats. Um, I put them inside each other to uh, finish the collar for the uh, lining because I want to make sure that it fits nicely on top of each other. So I stuck the lining into the coat. I uh, pinned the collar of the lining onto the collar of, of onto the top of the coat. Uh, I also put an reinforcement here on the back uh, on top of the lining of the same fabric as the outer fabric because I already saw 
uh, a bit pulling on the lining and this is a very thin fabric so uh, the coat is very heavy so I thought it will, will get uh, torn apart here so I put exactly the same shape I made here a piece of fabric on top of it and I could put my own tag in there too so uh, after that I pinned in the color of the lining and because I didn't um, correct this one and the lapels one what I did with the outer parts now when they are on top of each other I can exactly uh, make them do the, the same shape and to see if you do it exactly on the right place you can see when you fold this back that these can you see that yes you can see that these um, seams have to be uh, exactly uh, aligned so it's, and when you pin them down a bit then you can exactly see how it falls on top of each other and then I can see this is exactly the part that I cut off from the outer layer and now I can cut off from the lining uh, piece. I do cut off this because this is a rather, another shape uh, because I cut this piece off but here I just leave it like it is and I have to cut out this uh, triangle. I do that when I'm, uh, st I've stitched this on and I'm sure that I don't uh, move it around or something. So that's what you're gonna do first. Um, sew the color to your lining and then sew this all together on top of each other and that goes all the way around uh, except of course for the lining on the bottom you must uh, see how long you want your coat to be you can cut the outer fabric just at the right size that you like and then when you put your coat on you can see how much of the lining you have to fold in uh, and you make this a nice hem with your sewing machine and then um, that is finished too um, what I also did is I cut the belt and I just made like this nice uh, I just made um, a long strip I had to make two strips because I didn't have that much fabric left uh, of six centimeters wide uh, so I sewed them together and then you have a really nice belt uh, the only thing I could do is just one uh, one piece uh, I think I'm gonna uh, sew all around then you have a nice stitching uh, around the belt and I think that looks more nice and more expensive because I think this coat is really looking expensive when it's ready I think you'll be amazed how it looks and if you've done it nice uh, you cut it nice I think no one will see that you made it yourself and it's nice when people don't know it and they get surprised that they say oh, did you make it yourself that's a good point uh, when they ask you oh did you make it yourself then it's not a good point because then they can see that something is not really as it should be when you bought it in the shop so I always hope that they are surprised that I made it and not that they ask if I made it because then I didn't do it right uh, but I also already cut uh, what the pockets um, you can make them as small as you, or as uh, little as you like um, what I uh, suggest is you put your coat on and then see where you want your pockets to be because some people want more on the sides other want more in the middle some want more lower or higher so put it on pin uh, your pocket where you want it to be I think it's best to uh, put uh, the top of the pocket you're seeing it upside down now because then it was easier for me to show the color uh, the top of the pocket fold it over to the outside or to the inside it doesn't matter make a stitch here then you have a bit more fabric to shove your uh, hand in and then it's easier to find your pockets it's strange when you're constantly looking and can't find your pockets so do it to the inside or to the outside also okay because all we have is this uh, on top of each other seams and then you just make a stitch all around uh, what else oh we have to make the tabs for the belt because otherwise you have uh, that belt always hanging loose so uh, when you put your uh, coat on seek where your waist is on the sides pin put a pin there and make uh, some taps there just little small um, taps are enough where your belt can can go through so uh, six centimeters high and I think a centimeter wide or something that will be enough uh, you also can do one uh, on the mid back then your belt will uh, hang nicely uh, at your waist length in, on the back so that's what you can do too um, anything else no I think that's it and we're gonna finish it and we'll see each other back with the coat on so I think that will be a surprise okay and this is the final result of the coat I'm very happy with it turns out really nice of course this was not my first woolen coat to make but I had this fabric for so long that I'm really happy how it looks now that I 
finally made a cow coat out of it. Um, I hope yours turned out very well too. Uh, for me it looks really expensive. You can't see it's self-made. Uh, you know I don't like that. And with all the details I think it's really nice how it turned out. And you can really match it up with all kinds of things. I like it with a big scarf. So my dupe Chloe bag. And you have a really nice outfit. Very stylish, very good to wear. I think it will be very hot, very warm to wear in uh, in winter. With the lining, also the lining went very nice. I'll show you when I open it. Very nicely lined everywhere. And maybe you say, well, the pockets look a bit strange. Um, that's right. I cheated a bit because I didn't really like these big uh, on top of the coat uh, pockets so I cheated and because this is for me not a tutorial but also a winter coat I have to wear I made other sleeves for my coat <laughs> don't judge me please <laughs> I made inseam pockets because I think that looks more sleek more nicely when you don't have the big pockets on but just the pockets in the sleeves um, I thought for the beginners it is too difficult to do that too because this wasn't really an easy project so I thought when I make the in pocket seams for the beginners then they get really afraid and they won't make it but uh, I do a, a separate tutorial uh, with, for these pockets so if you want to make these pockets you can certainly do that, uh, do that too it looks very nice very expensive when you make this uh, also the fabric does it all of course because it's a, it's a really nice fabric and it wasn't even that expensive for me. I think I bought it for 10 euros uh, a meter so that's really not expensive for a woolen coat. If you should try this in the shop it would certainly be 200 or something like that. So very happy with the result. Oh, I didn't say you had to put the buttons on it and show it and you make the button holes. If you want to make a tutorial for that I will do too. Uh, but all the sewing machines are different so they all have an automatic uh, button hole maker so I don't know if it is of any use to do a tutorial because your sewing machine will be different from mine so um, maybe it, it has no point to do a tutorial but if you want me to then uh, leave a comment and I will, I will do so uh, and of course you had to uh, hem the sleeves uh, the lining of the sleeves but that was obvious so I didn't say that I didn't show you that this I just cut off as all the other seams. So very happy with this. Um, again I had a problem with the length of my uh, videos uh, because this was a really uh, extensive project. Um, I think one of the most difficult things to make is a woolen coat, a winter coat or a ball gown. Those are the two things I think that are the most, most difficult so that they take the most uh, time to uh, explain how you make the pattern. Um, I want you to uh, understand how you make a pattern, why you make a pattern, uh, because uh, then you really understand what you are doing. Um, I want you to understand what a princess seam does, uh, what it makes in your shape, in your fit. Uh, I want you to know where you put your princess seams, why you uh, shift a sleeve, uh, because when you understand that then you can really make what you see in the shops then you can just see something hanging and think oh okay there's a princess seam there's this there's that and then you can go home and draw that out usually in the shops i make a drawing or online i make a drawing okay i want that and that and, that. and i lay it down and then i know okay i want that seam that seam i want it there i want it there and when you understand how, why you make these seams then you can really uh, design your own clothing you can really make what you have seen and so that's why i want to explain it so thoroughly how you make the pattern, why you make the pattern, why you sew it this way or that way, because then you don't get fails. The only fails that I have, and it has been a long time, but I also had some fails, it was because it didn't look good on me, because I'm really short, um, and then some things uh, just don't look good at you, and because I don't shop in the shops, so I don't try things on, uh, then I see something online, think, oh, I like that. I make it and then when I put it on I'm really too short to wear that it makes me even look shorter or something so that's the only fails that I have and if you want to make these pockets next tutorial next week I will uh, post that one and then you can make the coat also with these pockets or it's also really nice but just not really my taste 
the big pockets. Just whatever you like. Okay, um, I promise I will try to make my other, my new videos uh, shorter than this one. I already had to cut them in two and I don't like that. But it, it was 30 minutes for the pattern, 30 minutes for the sewing. Uh, I'll try, I have to edit this one, so I'll try to make this one, to cut this one in half, but I, uh, in half the time. But I don't know if I am able to, because um, what I say, I think it's really important to say it, otherwise I wouldn't say it. So I tried to cut it down a bit, because I know I uh, saw things twice or thrice or four times. So I know I fall in, uh, I don't know the word in English, but you know what I mean, because I'm doing it now. Um, but um, I, in, in the future I will try to make my uh, video shorter so that it's more compact. And uh, thanks Robin for your suggestions. Thank you very much. I will certainly uh, use them in my next video. Uh, you're very... Uh, uh, what's the word? I don't know the word again, but you know what I mean. Um, I, it's, Robin is a subscriber for me. And she's very loyal, that was the word I was looking for. And she gave me some tips how I can uh, adjust the time of the pattern making so that it's not that long to uh, watch. Because maybe it's not nice to watch. But if you like my videos, please subscribe. There will be lots of more. I uh, think I'm going to make a sweater dress. And maybe I'm going to make a paperback trousers. That's something that I don't know uh, if it looks good on me i think it's not but maybe i will make it anyway because it will look good on you probably so maybe i gotta do that so lots of things to uh, create uh, the coming uh, weeks and months so if you like my videos please subscribe uh, give it a thumbs up and i'll see you next week with these pockets bye thanks for watching